2S on this little guy. So before I talk about 2S, let's talk about this in general. So there have been some developments. I have been working on actually bringing this frame out and making it available and also making some other things available as well. So one of the main issues that I had with building this thing is that I couldn't get the motor wires to fit because uh, they weren't long enough to actually plug in and get down there. And I needed to fit these large 2.6 inch, the King Kong 60, 65 millimeter props that are actually 66 millimeters on the frame without hitting, running into the motor wires. So I thought that maybe we should make motors that have longer wires and then I'll just really cramp the frame down so that most people that have a 75 millimeter whoop could make it happen. But then I took a look at some of the 75 millimeter whoops and none of the wires were the same length. And so I had little mini race wire made. <laughs> so we have little tiny five millimeter wide by 12 millimeters long by 0.6 millimeters thick race wire coming. Yes, it's gonna be an annoying solder job, but it's a hell of a lot easier than um, soldering in wire extensions. And the reason why I used yellow heat shrink here is so that people could see my pain and struggle and how much I wanted to build this thing soldering on all those wires, really a pain. So I'm really looking forward to the little micro race wire, which is really gonna make things a lot easier. So I'm gonna go over a bunch of the things that I've found out so far. I have been building these things for a while. These are just the new versions of them because they have the all-in-one whoop boards. And that's really what made these things really, really simple to build. Um, the Lil Deuce is an awesome product and I have been like eyeing it for like six months or so whenever since it came out. However, you have to use a full stack. And I've been talking to the, the Deuce developer and he realizes as well that these little whoop boards that have everything built in are going to bring a lot more people into the micro market because they're just so much easier to manage. Let's first talk about the boards. The Crazy B board that comes in the previous generation of brushless whoops performs stellar. I have not had a single issue with one board and I've had like 20 of them already. So really, really stellar quality control. So I don't even know how they pull it off, but this is a little cheap product and they have really stellar quality control. When Beta is a really expensive, arguably, well, they're trying to be a more quality product and I had three boards and two of them have failed. So it's just maybe just my bad luck. However, I only have one Mobula 7 board. So this is my Mobula 7, which is not a Mobula 7 anymore. <laughs> and that's the board I'm using for this one that, cause I really wanted to try 2S. Unfortunately, it still has an F3 processor, but it performs admirably. It performs as good as it could possibly perform with respect to the ESC performance and the motor performance. It performs really, really stellar. So if you have a Mobula 7, it's probably going to be an ideal transfer onto this frame especially the camera. The camera apparatus that I have on the, that the Mobula has on it is uh, not the same thing as this one that I have a couple of, and um, it performs better. The video quality is definitely better. The signal quality is definitely better still. The, in general, the Mobula 7 board and camera setup performs great, really does perform great really does perform great and I would say the 80802 motors on the Mobula which are actually 16,000 kV are going to be a really perfect transfer over onto this frame for 1S. This is using the Beta FPV uh, 12,000 kV motors which are really phenomenal on 1S and extremely fast on 2S. I'm gonna post more video later, but it's really, really extremely fast on 2S. I don't recommend that much KV on 2S with these props. It's just too much speed. The camera has such a wide field of view that everything is warped and you can't see anything coming up in front of you because things are rushing up so quickly. So yeah, if you're gonna run 2S on something like this, you're probably gonna want lower KV motors with these props this big. So that's a good segue into the motors in general. Let's talk about the motors. So these motors are, I don't even know, Happy Model 16,000 KV 0703 motors. The motors I have on this are the Racer Star 0703 22,000 KV motors. The KVs are really all over the place. So this, this and it's not really so important as the, as the actual motor quality. These Happy Model motors, they looked really good and they say they're 16,000 kV, but they do not perform like they're 16,000 kV at all. They have really sluggish performance. It's just not good. As you can see, it's not even built. I didn't even bother finishing putting it together again for the fourth time because I was just experimenting with the frame. The Racer Star motors are definitely better. 
at 22,000 kV, they are a little bit much. Once you pass about 50% throttle range, it just kind of gives up and it doesn't really have any more to give. It's just done. It, you still get a little bit more speed at the top, but it does. it's just pretty much done after about 50%. On the 08, 02, 12,000 kV, it is way better control. Way, way, way better control. Significantly better. Plus with the bearings of the beta motors, it makes it super smooth to fly, super nice to fly. It's just a lot better. And the 12,000 kV matches much, much better. I would say that even a little bit lower kV is okay as well because once you pass, again, about 75-ish percent, they kind of give up. So as if you look at the flight, I'll post more flight video later, but when you're flying this, you're pretty much staying around 75% max because after that, you're not, you notice that you're not getting any more power or speed or anything out of it. So I would say even lower kV is fine or better for 1S. And I do prefer 1S on this thing because 2S is just wild. It's just way too fast. You don't, you don't, you really don't need the 2S on something like this that weighs so little and has such awesome performance even on 1S. The props, the props are very special. They are, well, let's continue with the motors. So the um, Mobula has the um, 07, oh, sorry, 0802, 16,000 kV. I haven't swapped it over to see how those perform, but I'm sure they're going to perform perfectly fine on 1S. Like the 0703 or this 0802 from Beta, I probably would bet that the top 30% or 40% is going to feel like it just doesn't have any more power or any more give in, left in it because the kV is just too much kV. On 2S, I'm sure it's going to be blindingly fast, just like these motors as well. A lot of the micro guys tell me that 1103 is a sweet spot, especially for these props, and I would believe them because they have more experience than me. I have been testing these things a lot, but they have definitely done a lot more than I have, especially uh, Dalton from the, the guy that makes Little Deuce. He's making some 1103 motors that are all custom made, and he's really tailored it and really perfected it to his quad and his craft and what he runs. So I would bet that that's probably going to be a, a motor, one of the motors to get. And, uh, I do have 0804 motors on the way as well because those are the biggest motors I could find that had the one millimeter shaft that would fit these props on board. And I'm going to test those as well. So let's talk about these props. These are the King Kong 65 millimeter props. They are fantastic. They've been popular for a long time. I have crashed the crap out of this thing this morning, at least 30 crashes, and I have done nothing. Not, not a single thing has changed on the quad. I've scraped up the corners maybe a little bit, and I bent one prop. This prop right here, you can see a very light crease in the prop where I bent it back and just kept flying. So yeah, that's all the damage that happens. And the props are plenty durable and they perform really, really fantastic. However, on 2S, if you load up two of the 450 milliamp cells on around max throttle, you definitely hear the props fluttering and maxing out and they just can't take the weight. Even though the all-up weight's only like 54 grams with two of the 450 milliamp packs, with the um, with one 450, it's about 40 grams, and with two of the 300 milliamp cells, it's 42 grams. <laughs> so it's the right weight for 2S on a quad of this size, with that much power and these flimsy props. I have commissioned Gemfan and both both Gemfan and HQ. So Gemfan wasn't the first person to design this prop, but somebody else designed it. But then Gemfan kind of improved it, and then King Kong copied it outright and used this polycarbonate material that seems to be perfect. This is one incidence where the clone of the product is actually better than the original product. I don't remember who made the original product. However, I have commissioned both Betaflight and HQ to make this same 65 millimeter prop in their polycarbonate and make it a tri-blade because I feel like the tri-blade is going to be fantastic because the prop is already such low load that it's a perfect prop to throw in a tri-blade and give us even more control because in the past, as we went from twin blade to tri blade on a five inch, we just gain a whole lot more control. When you go to quad blade, you gain even more control. However, you also lose a lot of top speed and it becomes very inefficient. So this thing flies for about four and a half, five minutes. <laughs> yeah, ripping on a one S 450 milliamp battery for five minutes. And I think we have some efficiency to lose. It's okay to, to drop a minute of flight time to get much better control. And on top of that, with the 1103 motors, I think they are gonna be able to spin the tri-blade very nicely. Gemfan has told me that they are going to create the tri-blade for me, for the market, for everything. So I am very much looking forward to that. And I also believe that maybe 1103, 10,000 kV or 11,000 kV will become kind of the ideal all around size for something that weighs around 40 grams and spins these props. Now there are other props 
some props uh, that were made for by Rotor X as well, like a 3020 prop, I think, that has the two screw hole mounts. And those are great as well. However, I really love simplicity and I really love the simplistic press fit of these props. They're, they're, they're really easy to press fit on the shaft. They fit really nicely. Uh, they feel kind of loose. However, it does not. it's not a problem at all in the air and they perform fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to the tri-blade version and I also asked them to make it with a 1.5 millimeter hub because 1.5 millimeter is a better size for the uh, motor shaft, not necessarily because of bending because I probably are not gonna be able to bend any of these shafts uh, with this low weight, but the bearings being used in this tiny size are a problem for a one millimeter or 0.8 millimeter shaft, they become more expensive. So if you have a 1.5 millimeter shaft, it becomes much more cost effective. Now, again, I said, this is the Mobula camera on there. The Mobula camera just performs better than these other little cameras that I've, I've been using. And uh, also, oh yeah, I forgot to say, this is the B-Brain camera mount, which some, a couple people recommended in the previous video, and I didn't know about it. And this mount is the best mount it, it, <laughs> that, I've, that I've used yet. It's really, really nice, really sturdy. It's made of the resiny material, so it's not going to break on me, or at least definitely not going to break very easily. Uh, you kind of just shove the camera inside it, and then I don't know how it's supposed to stay on. I think it's actually designed for the even smaller version of the whoop cameras because I did have to kind of shave the edges around the sides to actually get the camera to fit inside. But once it was done and I had to clip the, the, the hoods off a little bit, it, it's nice that it has a little bit of hood protection, however. But once I did that, it fits really nicely and the way I've designed the frame and the way it fits on top, it allows me to change the angle really easily by just screwing and unscrewing this front screw. So it's super duper nice. I really, really appreciate them making this thing. It'd be even nicer if they made it fit these things a little bit better, <laughs> but really, really like it. The uh, Beta FPV camera mounts are similar and they are very rubbery and I am planning on using them with something like the Tiny Hawk camera, which is awful, which I don't recommend. But this is the FXT T80, uh, I think. I don't know, links in the description below if you want it. This is a pretty good camera. Uh, it's not the best still. I think the EOS, I've seen videos of the EOS camera, the, the, um, the one that comes on the trash can, Those, that looks really nice really really nice but this is also a pretty nice camera and it will cram into these little things and i am planning on using this on uh not the trash can maybe something else that will come at some point okay and lastly before i continue well this is really just telling you the updates of things that are happening so there's things coming and the frame is going to be coming i've been refining it i also added a 16 by 16 mount version uh, 16 by 16 mount hole so that people that want to build it with a stack can build it with a stack it is going to come with a frame and hardware as well as a race wire it's probably not going to come with a camera mount because all the various different cameras like the tiny hawk has a different camera the whoops have different cameras the trash can has a different camera the beta has a different camera so it's really hard to include just one universal camera mount people are going to have to figure that out for themselves there might be a kit in the future, <clears throat> who knows, things have to develop a little bit more. However, I also am going to be trying to make a frame for the Tiny Hawk because this Tiny Hawk board performs <clears throat> really well as well. It's also an F4, so I really like the fact that it's an F4 and I can get that really good F4 performance. Also, because it comes with this little battery holder on top, I am going to try and build a frame or design a frame that puts the battery on top so that you can slip the battery right into this little battery holder and take advantage of how nice and secure this thing is. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that performs. And I have already designed the frame. It's a little bit of a weird frame. It's gonna, this board is gonna sit inside the frame upside down. There's a lot of holes in the frame. And then you're gonna have to just, or I'm gonna solder on the motor wires and just see how it performs. And that's the one I'm gonna put the 0804 motors on to see how that performs and see if putting the battery on top really does make any kind of a significant difference. Anyways. There's a lot more testing to do in this category. I cannot, I'm just floored at the performance. I can't believe that 1S can do the things that I'm doing. This just, this should not be possible. There are literal TV remotes that have more battery performance <laughs> than these little whoops. And they're incredible. Not one time has anybody come up to me and said, this is dangerous, you shouldn't be doing this here. They all just laugh and they're just so happy to see it. And they're so, it's so fun for everybody to watch because it's just so light. It doesn't do anything. And that's the most important part, that it weighs nothing. It's 40 grams. So it's really, really hard to cause any trouble. However, if you run it on 2S, that, that might start becoming a little bit unsafe because it is a lot faster. But on 1S, 
you don't need 2S. You really, really don't need 2S on these things. It is a nice option. And if you were to build one from scratch, I would right now recommend the Mobula boards, but the uh, trash can boards will become made available definitely very soon. So that's going to become the one to get. But it's really, really nice that it's so lightweight that it's hard like, It's hard for somebody to be angry at you. <laughs> I think there's one guy that was weary of it, and then I crashed into myself, like crash landed into my own controller. And then he was like, oh yeah, that's not dangerous at all. Because I just ran right into myself. <laughs> and there was also somebody on Facebook that was really, really angry that I was flying, you know, in public around cars. And then I made a video of, of, uh, <laughs> of me showing him that... You can't even break skin with this thing. The props don't spin fast enough or hard enough to break skin, so it's better. I also ran it into my own head to show him that there is no, there's no pain. It doesn't cause any harm. So it's really, really nice. This was just an update video. I'm really so excited about this thing, and it's super, super duper fun. I really can't wait for people to fly this thing more. The class has been around for a long time. People know that. But it's only become super easy and super manageable because of these all-in-one whoop boards. I would like to make one more note. I have asked Trappy to please, please make an all-in-one whoop board that has crossfire baked into it. Now, I'm not looking for 10 miles range, but I am looking for maybe a mile range. It would be super nice because with a 450 million battery, you can fly for five or more minutes. That's a lot of flight time, and it's not slow. You could also load up a 600 milliamp and probably get six or seven minutes. And so this thing becomes like the perfect micro long range cruiser with a 200 milliamp VTX and the crossfire built in. It's just going to be wild. It's, it's going to happen for sure. He can't deny it. I, I have a firm belief that this class is going to explode over the summer because it is just too much fun. And it's too good of performance not to. So, OK, more to come. Just more to come. Take care. Please floss. Floss your teeth. Please floss your teeth. Also, the name of this thing is going to be Toothpick. And uh, those that have been following me for a while know that I had designed a Toothpick frame a long time ago. And it just never came out because the builds were not there. The, the stack builds were annoying to build. They had problems. The firmware, the code wasn't up to par. They had issues. It just wasn't there. And now we finally, we are there. And it's going to get better. Okay, bye.